welcome to waterfowl hunting 2017-2018 season calling randall outdoors back for his favorite sport of all honker hunting folks today's video is gonna be a hunt and then uh, at the end of the video we're gonna show you how to clean the geese and how we cook them first things first you got to determine which way the wind is blowing you know so you can either grab some grass or you can just yeah you can see that in camera looks like it's going that way so all of our decoys want to face into the wind. The birds like to land into the wind, right Harlan? Yep. I reckon that is a camouflaged flat. Here's the office for the day, covered in bushes. Can't see it from the front. When they fly over, they'll just see us in camouflage. Right, HLR? That's right. Damn, that's right, for show. Sure. This video is sponsored by Colin Randall Outdoors, Guide to Successful Waterfowl Hunting. Link in description. I wrote this ebook for those new to waterfowl hunting or uh, just not getting the results they want. Really proud of this book and I think it'll bring a lot of value to you guys. It's on sale right now for the uh, 2018 season coming up. So, geese are starting to fly. Just saw a small flock of lessers, but uh, we're gonna get this hunt, cook, and clean video underway. You're gonna Most people are going to wonder, why didn't you shoot that goose when it came in? Well, you hear him honking? I got another caller in the field when he's sitting there. We got geese circling us now from behind flying this way. And we got another goose in the field. And he sounds more like like than any caller can. So that's strategy. All right, folks. You can't get too excited to start shooting. That's the difference from limiting and shooting one. When we have a bird laying at the beginning, you know, I like to practice my calling and see if they're comfortable with how I'm calling. If they seem skittish, means you're calling like shit. See, he's looking. He wants to find that goose and, and make friends. So he's, he's even walking towards me. That means you're calling good. Now, if I call like a party blower, he's probably going to fly away. So we got geese coming right over us now. So we let these birds land because all the ones circling us see them landing and not getting shot. Strategy. Kill him. I think I got two. So, word of advice for all those new hunters out there. That one bird that we let land that most people would have just smoked right away brought in five kills for us. We're already halfway limited at 7.49 a.m. because of that. All right, so here's what the spread looks like. Um, the birds were super comfortable with it. My theory is the birds like to land in numbers. They feel safer, and they like to also stay away from the lookers. The lookers are, you know, the safeguard of the flock. So the birds will try to land in between all the lookers, which is right in the middle, which is why I leave it less dense. And the birds land right in the middle. <laughs> Let them fly that way and then we'll call out them hard and they'll turn, I think. I'm coming down yonder to take a look, see? Here, folks. Oh. Nice. Two there. 
Oh my god, that last shot got him. I good. was gonna wait for those other to circle around, and then those two were just coming straight in. I'm I know, we're like, I'll shoot one of them at least. That was sick. Man, they're small, really small. This right now, bunch of lessers. Hopefully, we can get some big honks. Okay, you're shooting on this one. When they come into us, wings in. Kill him! There's your two! <laughs> Player one has limited. Webbed foot on Instagram, folks. Webbed foot. God, that was dope. Look in front of us. Oh my God. Folks, we ain't even in Canada. We're in Colorado. I mean, you should be called Colorado Geek. What do you want more on? I was trying to decide, like, which one is you going to choose? Folks, for my calculation, it's 811, and that's 10 geese. If you're new to waterfowl hunting or just not seeing the results you want, check out my ebook at CROHQ.com. It's on sale right now. You'll have really cool Snapchat stories like Harlan here, covered in geese. All my secrets are there. You're gonna be an expert hunter in no time. All right, we're gonna head in and clean and cook these geese now. Uh, we're gonna take you along, show you how to do that, how we like to cook our geese. There's many different recipes, but we're gonna show you one of them. Uh, just a really quick, easy one for people to try out. So if you wanna learn about things like decoy strategy, when to call, when you should rearrange your decoys, where you should hunt, how to get access to hunt private land. I covered these things and many more in my ebook. You learn from my previous mistakes over 13 years of hunting ducks and geese, so you don't have to make the mistakes yourself. You can go from beginner to expert in no time. Click the link below to my website to get that book. You're, you're definitely gonna wanna get that book. All right, so now we're ready to clean the geese. Uh, I'm gonna have Harlan uh, breast it and I'll explain how he's breasting it as we go. If you already know this stuff, you can skip ahead to the cooking. The first thing he's gonna do is he's gonna rip the feathers up towards the head on the breast, the bottom of the bird. You're gonna see that, uh, you wanna see the skin. You know the term goosebumps? Comes from the skin of a goose because it looks like little bumpy patches of skin, I guess, I don't know. Goosebumps, folks, there you have it. A lot of people like to br pluck this whole breast part. You really don't need to. You really just need to be able to pluck right where you're going to cut that first line. Right. Now he's going to cut right along the breastbone, exposing thy breast. And you're just going to peel the skin back. Like he's saying, most people peel um, all the feathers off, but it takes a lot of time. You don't need to do that. Just peel the feathers um, to where you can expose that little bone right down the center of its chest and then you cut along it and you pull the skin back like so. Some geese have tougher skin than others, also depends on how long after the kill it is. When the bird is uh, freshly killed, 
it's a lot easier to breast the bird. And then his first knife cut, he's gonna cut along that white part right there, that's the bone, the breast bone. Cut right along it, following down all the way against the bone. So you have all that meat. And then you're just gonna cut around, you're gonna fillet, you're gonna pull them, them breast apart and just fillet it out. That way you don't waste any meat. Right, right against the bone. And then you just repeat on the other side, super easy. All right, so the first step you wanna do is clean off the meat, put it in a bowl, fill it with water, and mix it with salt. You know, stir it in, and then put it in the fridge, and leave it there. The longer the better. So we brine the uh, goose breast for about four hours. Nice and cold water in the fridge. And we can't forget, let's go, Bud Light here. Next step. Step two, set the Bud Light down. We're saving that for later. And you want to clean off the meat. There's, you know, salt in there. You don't want to have this thing full of salt water. Wash it real good. Work your hands in there. Try to get all that white skin off. Once you're satisfied with the cleanliness of the meat, then you crack out the Bud Light. I always take a first sip just to make sure it's a fresh brew, like Bud Light always is. Then you just pour it right on top of that breast. Foamier the better. Once your goose breast is soaking in, Let's go, Bud Light. you want to go ahead and put that back in the fridge with the other Bud Lights. Leave it in there for a solid hour. It's fermenting in there. All right, so once we let the uh, breast marinate in the, the Bud Light, go ahead and slap it on the grill and let it cook at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, cooking each side evenly. The middle temperature needs to be 135. That's when you're done. Right at 135, folks. That means it's done. All right, so this is about what the inside of the breast should look like. You know, slightly pink, not not too cooked where it's where it's gray and uh, burnt. Just like that, it's good to go when the middle temperature is about 135, not over 140. Then I like to use a little A1 on my honker breast. Give her a, give it a go, folks. A little piece cut. And that, folks, five-star restaurant with Colin Randall Outdoors. It's pretty good. Serve it to your friends, you know, vegan friends even, and they won't even know it's goose. Delicious, I'm gonna let Harlan try it out. What do you think? Can it taste good? Cole's gonna give it a go. See what he thinks. Fresh kill of the day. Lesser Canadian goose. Not even going with the sauce, huh? Not bad. Pretty good. There you have it, folks. Cole Randall indoors. <laughs>